Hello, my name is Robin Mitchell and today Electromega is here at Hardware Pioneers Max 2024 London and we are at the ST stand joined by my very good friend Nick Stone from Anglia. Nice to have you. Now, before you're wondering, STM, they are microcontrollers if you didn't know. And while my personal favourite one is the STM8, they're on their way out these days because they're a bit on the old side. On the way out. Not on the way out, but a bit old. Maybe. They've been around a few years, I would say. They've been around for a few years. Not quite as long as me, but... Not quite as long as him. But what is interesting is all the stuff that's currently coming out. So I would like you to tell the audience what we've got going on here today. We've got microprocessor rather than a microcontroller. Processor? Yeah. Ooh. So microprocessor, dual, dual Cortex, ARM Cortex A35 plus a Cortex M33. So runs Linux, very capable of doing AI, has a neural coprocessor for doing AI. Uh, also has a quite a powerful graphics controller in it. ST's top of the range device at the moment. Fairly new, been out, just just gone onto mass market. Other things that are new, right at the bottom end, we've got STM32 U0, Cortex M0, yep. very low power, very low cost device, yep. and Cortex C0, which could potentially replace your beloved STM8 at some point. Similar price bracket. Now that's a hard price to beat because those things are almost cents to the dollar. So, yeah. but it's, well, it's what kind of price are we talking about? It's third, 30 cents, something like that. So that's quite. That's quite not bad at all. For a 32 bit. In reasonable volumes, obviously. Yeah, that's 32 bit, that, for 30 cents, that's really good. That's really not bad at all. So, what I'd like to ask you first, you said microprocessor. Now that I find that quite interesting because not I, I wouldn't say many engineers work with microprocessors compared to microcontrollers. You know, I mean, I, I would say it's probably a ninety to ten ratio. You know, nine to ten ratio. So nine to one ratio. <laughs> um, so my I suppose my, my question to you is then that obviously means you've got to integrate a lot of other components, right? You've got to have external memory. Yep. So DRAM, DDR2, DDR3, uh, external program memory. So there's no flash on board those, that's the main big difference. But you can boot from a NAND flash, serial flash, SD card. The big, I think the big, with the, with the, the MP1, which is the older one, and the MP2, the big, the big selling point for a lot of customers that we deal with is that it's got an STM32 IO, if you want to call it an IO device, as a third core on a lot of the parts. So they can run a lot of the applications that they've always run in real time and have the luxury of being able to do IP and graphics using Linux where there's a mass of available software to do it. I think you can do IP on a microcontroller, but it's it's a bit a little bit more messy. Because you because that's I, what it says on the tin. Yeah. If you want you know, if you need flexibility and yeah. programmability do it with Linux because it's got it all there. It's got all the security. You can do TLS, you can do yeah. file transfer protocol. Because one thing I've always found is that if you try and add other people's IP onto a microcontroller, you have to make sure it's put in the right part of memory. It's got to work together. But if you have a microprocessor, you tend to have like the uh, operating system handling where things are put. Like you do it on a PC. Exactly. You just double click. It's yeah. there. It's, it's part of the file system. It just gets cool. And that makes all the, all the difference. Um, I actually have to, I do have a question about that actually about uh, the microprocessor design. In a typical computer, let's say your typical desktop PC and you've got RAM and you've got your CPU, you tend to have like bridges and like memory controllers to make sure that the, the two talk to each other correctly. Do you need the same when you use a microprocessor with like DDR RAM? You don't have a bridge, it drives it direct. It drives it direct. Yeah. So ST have actually been really, really clever in the way they've done their footprint on the bottom of the devices so that designing to use with DRAM, DDR, it's obviously high speed, causes a lot of people that have microcontrollers will go high speed. Yeah. Um, but they've done it so that you can, it's obviously, it's it's a big leap move into a microprocessor from a microcontroller. You've got get, so many more system components exactly. to worry about. But to do the DDR, they've done it so the ball pattern on the bottom of the devices lends itself to a good straight to DDR yeah. layout. And actually, in theory, you can do it on a four layer board. I wouldn't necessarily be, it'd be tricky, but you could do it. Six layer or eight layer is probably going to be better. But as 
people are using six layers for a microcontroller now a lot of the time. It's not really used. If you go back a few years, I suppose a six layer board would have been a bit expensive, but they're not here. Run in the mill these days. And and so what I'm just trying to get in my mind is that um, so let's say you have like a DDR package and you've got your microprocessor package. Is it mostly a, a straight line bus from one to the other, or is there going to be? Gonna, you're going to have match tracks. You've got to have. Oh, I, I mean, like just in terms of physical connection, there's no like there's no secondary chip in the sitting in between. No, you, it would be from straight from CPU yeah. to the memory. Because yeah. um, one thing I find, because I know that like you know, the MP2 has an DDR3 controller in it, which will support. I think it supports other versions of DDR, yeah. but that's the one that mostly people are using. Because the way, the way I see that, it kind of reminds me of the Z80 or, or of, the, of the modern world, because where you could just literally connect up your memories straight to the process without yeah. any need for additional stuff. So it's really simple in its, in its design. Should be, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. you don't need any buffers or anything. I think if you if you had large amounts of memory on a microprocessor system, you might need to bank it instead. No, on those, for a reasonable amount of memory, you just straight to the chip. Now, as a field applications engineer who obviously works and breathes STM32s, most likely, most likely, most yeah. likely what would you say is your favorite STM32 part? My favorite one, I think in the moment, is probably an STM32H5, which is a Cortex M33. It's fairly new, but it's, it's, a, it's a really nice device. Now, what makes it nice? Just its capabilities. Mm -hmm. And the fact it's new, so it's more interesting. And the fact that it's new, obviously. So you like you like new toys. I like new toys, yeah. Fantastic. Like engineers. <laughs> so obviously, the moment that one goes uh, obsolete, you're going to chuck it, go over the next one. Oh, uh, you won't get obsolescence very quick with STM32s. So they're all on ten year. Actually, that's a good point. I, I, I've rarely seen an STM. I've rarely seen an STM well, uh, started, 30 part. I started yeah. Using F1s. Yeah, yeah. About sixteen years ago when they first came out. Still being and made. Still going now. Yeah, still going strong, which is fantastic. So my last question to you, um, for those who are out there who are watching this video, who want to get into STM32 parts and they're looking to get some STM32 parts, what would you recommend that they do? Get a dev kit. That's it. A good way of starting all the tools for STM32 are free. You can download them off the ST website. That's what you want to do. They're good. They're a good learning tool. So something like a Nucleo board. Yeah. You can do lots with it. It's a good way to get started. I have to admit, one thing I've always loved about the STM parts is that all the registers were always in the same location for every chip in the family. So you, you could port code quite easily. Yeah, yeah. Whereas you go to other microcodes, it's like they, they, the register definitions are changing all the time. So you, you just can't port code at all. No. Well, thank you ever so much for taking the time to see us today. It was great to see you. Cheers. Thank have you. Have a good day. You too.